Here at the University of Finlay, founded in 1882, there is a museum that was created to exhibit the artwork from various children's book illustrations. The Mazda Museum was created by Dr. Jerry J. Mallet in 1982 as part of the centennial celebration for the university. There are over a thousand pieces of artwork in the collection. One of the spectacular pieces on display is from the book Aida. The illustrations in this book were created by the artistic duo Leo and Diane Dillon after it was converted from an opera into a children's story by Leontine Price. Leo and Diane Dillon are award-winning illustrators. One of their awards comes from the Mazza Museum itself. The Mazza Award is given to illustrators that exemplify excellence in artistic diversity. The award is also given to illustrators for their willingness to experiment with both styles and media of illustrating. Ashanti to Zulu and Why the Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears have both won the Caldecott Medal in consecutive years. They have been illustrating together for their entire marriage of 43 years. Leo and Diane are from two different races and were together at a time when it was not socially acceptable but their biggest difficulty was their jealousy of the other's artistic talent. They separated after college, but got back together shortly after. Now they use their artistic talents to collaborate together. In Leo and Diane Dillon's artwork, they have demonstrated characters from many different cultural backgrounds, and they have fantastical, racially ambiguous art. Leo Dillon told the Finley newspaper, I want to show every kid in every culture and every race that they're part of these fairy tales, a part of this fantasy place. Just like the illustrators, the characters in love in this story are from two different cultural backgrounds and are competing against each other. Unfortunately, the characters in the story do not have a similar fate like the Dillons. The illustrations are all the same size and in the same location on the right side of the book. Each page is framed by golden Egyptian rods, almost like they are trapping the pictures and words in place. Above the words, there are hieroglyphics that also document the story of Aida. The use of hieroglyphics and golden rods show the level of control the Egyptians will have over the events in the story. The first impression of the painting is that it depicts a powerful man protecting his lover from a hooded villain. The dark purple background and shadows create an eerie atmosphere that symbolizes danger. The tree separates the two people on the left against the man on the right. Why do you think that the sky is purple? The bright blues, gold, and red contrast against the dark purple of the painting. The amount of gold on the two on the left shows their goodness. The dark colors on the hooded figure associate him with danger and wrongdoing. What do you think they are saying to each other? The position of the woman implies that she is passive and helpless. The stance of the man emphasizes that he is aggressive towards the cloaked figure and protective of the woman. The cloaked figure looks angry and accusatory. It appears that the man is trying to attack the woman. What do their facial expressions tell you? The story actually revolves around two countries at war, Ethiopia and Egypt. The story begins with the Ethiopian princess Aida is kidnapped and made to be a slave for the Egyptian princess Amneris. Aida falls in love with Radames, an Egyptian captain who is betrothed to Amneris. During the course of the war, the Ethiopian king Amenazro evades Egypt only to be captured by the Egyptians. This leads Aida to be conflicted between the loyalty she felt for her father and her love for Radames. As time goes on, Amenazro convinces Aida to betray her love by convincing Radames to reveal the one unguarded road into Egypt. The image of the Mazu Museum depicts this betrayal. Knowing the true story shows that the purple sky is showing the conflict between the two royal houses, the stars being Ethiopia, while the clouds are Egypt as they slowly cover up the stars. The gold on all of them shows their social status, and the little pieces on Amenazro shows his fall from his royal roots. Aida's facial expression depicts her internal conflict of her love for her country and her lover. The red of Radame's sword shows the betrayal and stabbing pain he suffers because of it. The point of view of the audience is lower than that of the characters. Why do you think the point of view is so low? Are you hiding? The story ends with Radame's being buried for his seeming betrayal of his country. As he is sitting in his lonely cell, he discovers Aida is there with him, willing to die with him to be together forever. 
The final image is of Amneris praying to the gods for Rodimus to find a peaceful place of rest. 